Hi everyone, I'm FlagonHG, and I do a ton of hardcore Nuzlocks here on this channel. And today, I'm going to be doing a Nuzlocke encounter list of Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. Each encounter here will be ranked by evaluating how good the Pokemon is, what specific threats the Pokemon helps against, how likely you are to get the Pokemon in any specific Nuzlocke, and what encounters you will miss out on if you end up getting that specific Pokemon instead. For simplicity, this tier list is going to be focusing only on Black 2, and White 2 instead of the original Gen 5 games. My perception is that more people prefer to Nuzlocke Black 2 and White 2, and a lot of the rankings would be very similar for both games. Just as a reminder before we get started, this is my opinion. It is not objective fact, and I will likely make, you know, some mistakes. I'll likely have personal biases here, and I'll probably use some contradictory logic throughout. So just keep that in mind. If you have criticisms, be nice. So the first thing I want to talk about is just Black 2 and White 2 as games in general. Overall, they are pretty hard games to Nuzlocke. For the first three generations, there's a lot of Pokemon that just have really terrible movesets. Most of the Pokemon you're facing don't have a particularly strong stab move. They don't really have a way to deal huge amounts of damage. Generation 4 does fix that a lot with the physical special split that helps out a ton of Pokemon, and also they introduced a bunch of new moves. But even in those games, there's still a lot of Pokemon that just don't feel like they can be that strong when you're facing up against them. That pretty much completely changed in Generation 5, because now most Pokemon have access to really strong stab moves, they usually have a pretty good ability, and a lot of the new specific Pokemon that came from Generation 5 just have astronomically high attack or special attack stats, or sometimes both. This is kind of the start of the power creep that you really start to see in the most recent generations of Pokemon, but I think what makes Generation 5 particularly challenging is that critical hits still do double damage in Generation 5 as opposed to the 1.5 five times damage they do in later generations. So that just makes a huge chunk of the Pokemon that are like kind of in the middle of the decks. It just makes them significantly less viable for a Nuzlocke because they're so exposed to critical hits. And much more than in previous generations, Black 2 and White 2 just demand a lot more team building and strategizing in order to successfully win a Nuzlocke. So for all those reasons, this is not actually a game that I recommend Nuzlocking as your very first Nuzlocke but I find it to be a very fun game to Nuzlocke since it really does force you to think about things and strategize against certain threats. The Black 2, White 2 decks is also really diverse, which adds to the replayability of these games. There's a lot of routes with a lot of different Pokemon, so you'll usually get pretty unique teams if you just play every time. But at the same time, there are also a lot of very strong Pokemon that you can guarantee or almost guarantee thanks to either gift Pokemon or static encounters or using special encounters like Shaking Grass and Surf Spots. I do quickly want to just briefly highlight a few of the most most difficult fights in the game. The first one, uh, funny enough, is Charon, who is the first gym leader. And the main reason that this is a run ender is that there are only four potential encounters before the first gym. The good news is that it's so early in the game, so there's really not much that you can, you know, do about it. You kind of just have to hope that you get lucky and pull some good encounters. The next major potential run ender isn't actually until the fifth gym leader, Clay. It can be really difficult to find a guaranteed counter to this guy or an easy way to kill him before he kills you. After that, you've got Drayden with the first of actually two Dragon Dancing Haxorises in this playthrough. This one is a little less scary than the next one because his main attacking move here is Dragon Tail, which has negative priority. So it kind of actually like counteracts Dragon Dance's plus speed boost. And you should absolutely take advantage of that fact. But if you aren't prepared, he can still nail a huge chunk of your team. Especially because unlike in Black and White, Black 2 and White 2 have a very limited number of ice types available before fighting Drayden. You also don't get access to the Ice Beam TM before that, so instead if you want to use like a water type, a bulky water type to do this, you have to rely on Blizzard, which usually means you want to set up Hail unless you just roll the dice. Then you do have to fight Chorus and Getsis during the Team Plasma storyline, and both of those guys are actually pretty tricky. Chorus is nasty for a couple reasons, right? First off, he has a Magneton with e Light and a Magnezone, and both of them have the ability Sturdy, so it's almost impossible to kill them without having to tank at least one attack. 
And then Magnezone, of course, has Explosion, which is obviously super scary. He also does have a Cling Clang with an Air Balloon that likes to set up with Shift Gear and can almost always get a kill with Giga Impact if you aren't specifically prepared to take this thing out. Getsis isn't quite as volatile as Chorus, right? There's no Explosion, there's no Giga Impact, crazy stuff like that. But his team is just generally pretty powerful and very diverse, so you're going to need a lot of different types to reliably handle all six of his Pokemon. And if you don't come prepared, he can actually pick off quite a few Pokemon as well, which you never really want right before the Elite Four, right? And speaking of the Elite Four, the Elite Four in Unova is actually pretty tricky, especially on challenge mode when they all have items and one extra Pokemon. Most of their teams are constructed so that they can't be easily swept by spamming a single super effective move. So for example, Marshall's Pokemon, they almost all have a way to deal with flying types or psychic types or sometimes both. And all of these Pokemon hit super hard too, and they can usually kill Pokemon that take neutral damage with a critical hit. So you really need to be actively thinking about resistances and immunities when you're dealing with these four trainers specifically. But none of those Elite Four threats compared to the threat of Iris's Haxorus. In general, she has a pretty strong team that's full of really powerful and tricky Pokemon, especially because a bunch of them have items even not in challenge mode, but it's her Focus Sash Dragon Dancing Haxorus that can just very easily sweep entire teams after a single Dragon Dance. Like if you lose your Haxorus counter, and you're not prepared for it, and you know, it comes out at the wrong time, or you just don't really know exactly what you're doing, it comes out too early, and you don't have a way to quickly take it out, it's basically lights out for your team. It sets up one Dragon Dance, can outspeed almost anything, more than almost any other champion or fight in a vanilla game. This is one where you do need to actively come up with a plan to kill this thing quickly, or you will probably lose to it. So as you can see, there is a lot to think about when doing a Nuzlocke of Black 2 and White 2. And like in all Nuzlockes, things can get really messy very quickly. But one thing that's never messy is my personal hygiene routine, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Manscaped. Manscaped is the global men's lifestyle brand famous for their trimmers and hygiene formulations. But after years of being down in the trenches doing the dirty work, Manscaped is finally launching a beard trimming and styling routine with the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Shaving my beard has long been one of the most annoying and time-consuming parts of my day. But with the Beard Hedger Trimmer, you can choose from 20 different cutting lengths with a single guard zoom wheel, allowing for expert level precision. And since it's waterproof, cordless, and rechargeable, you can save time and create less mess by trimming while sitting down in the shower fully clothed as all men do. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit also comes with beard care products like beard shampoo, conditioner, oil, and balm to keep your facial hair soft and healthy. Plus, you'll get a travel case and a free gift of even more beard accessories like a beard brush, comb, and scissors. So if you're interested in improving your personal hygiene routine with any of Manscaped's products, you should head over to manscaped.com today to get 20% off and free shipping when you use the promo code FLYGON at checkout. Thanks so much to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get into ranking the Nuzlocke encounters of Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. Okay, so the first thing that we'll obviously start with is the starters. So we've got Superior, Embor, and Samurott. So starting with Superior, this is objectively the worst starter. Grass is just a very bad type into the first three gyms, and the other starter Pokemon are just much better for the early game when encounters are so low. But it is deceptively bulky, so it's solid for Leech Seed support in the mid and late game if you want. You know, you get early leftovers in this game, but there's no access to Protect, which makes it a little bit worse. Superior is actually a good electric resistance for Elisa, but it's not strong enough to capitalize off of it. It's okay into Clay's first few Pokemon, but it's not a good Exadrill answer because it'll take too much damage from Rock Slide or Metal Claw, and Grass type is neutral because Exadrill is part Steel type. It's obviously bad into Skyla, it's bad into Drayden, it's good into Marlin, I guess. And it's fine into the Elite Four and Iris, but it's just outclassed by so many other Pokemon at that point that it really just isn't that good of a choice for a starter. I'm gonna still put it in B tier because it's just, you know, it is a strong Pokemon, it's got a good base stat total, but I think this is definitely the worst of the three starters. Embor is probably the best. It's gonna go in A tier here. 
Fire type is obviously great into Berg, and it has no major weaknesses to any of the gym leaders until Clay. And it's actually still a good option for Clay if it's holding an air balloon, right? Fire types are super effective into Exedril Steel type, so it can actually do a pretty good job here. The move set for Embor leaves a little bit to be desired. Physical fire types just in general get pretty shafted, but you do get early access to the move tutor in Drift Fail City, which will give you fire punch and low kick. This thing does definitely fall off in the late game a little bit. You know, it is pretty solid into Colrus and Getsis, mainly Colrus's steel types and Getsis's dark types, and it's pretty solid into Iris's Hydreigon, Iris's Agron, and Caitlyn's Metagross if you're going into challenge mode. Next up is Samurott. Samurott is also going to go in A tier. I think it's a little worse than Embor, but it is still a pretty solid Pokemon. Normally taking the water type starter isn't super recommended because there's so many water types in the game, but Unova is shockingly devoid of water types for the first half of the playthrough, so it does make Samurott far more desirable than he might be otherwise. So this is a really good answer into Clay. I do think that this isn't quite as good as Embor because you don't have a really good answer into Berg's Pokemon, and if you go with Samurott, you have to rely on all the other Pokemon to deal with Berg, but, you know, there's usually pretty good answers for Berg by that point. Samurott also gets a lot of really nice coverage moves, so it gets Revenge, X-Scissor, and it also gets Ice Beam and even Blizzard. Not every single water type can learn Blizzard, but this one can, so it does make him very reliable for the endgame fights against Drayden, Getsis, Caitlyn, Lynn, Grimsley, and obviously Iris. Okay, so those are the starters. Again, I think I would best recommend Embor, but Samurott is solid, and like, I really want Superior to be better because it's so good in Blaze Black, but it's just not good in the vanilla games. I really wouldn't recommend picking that Pokemon. So now we'll move on to Route 19 encounters. Basically, you have two choices. It's either going to be Watchhog or Liopard, neither of which is particularly good. Watchhog is going to go into C tier here. It's actually better in black and white because he'll evolve before Lenora's level cap, who's the second gym leader of those games. But Roxy's level cap is 18 or 19, depending on normal or challenge mode. So this guy is actually pretty useless for the first two gyms, which is only like really the only time that you're ever going to use this Pokemon. Liopard, uh, I love him. I love Thanos, you know, reliable Pokemon in my Nuzlocke specifically when I limit my stuff, but in a regular Nuzlocke, Liopard is D tier. It's, it's terrible. It doesn't actually learn a physical dark type move other than Pursuit until it learns Night Slash at level 43. So this is just a terrible Pokemon. It's going to fall off super quickly, and it also doesn't evolve before Roxy, so it's really, really disappointing. There's also just so many other better dark type Pokemon in this game that you should basically never be using Liopard after the, like, third gym. And the third gym here is bug type, so that's bad. Um, speaking of bad Pokemon, we can uh, move on to Route 20 Pokemon with Unpheasant. People love to be like, Unpheasant is actually good because super luck, and one time I critical hit something with Air Slash. Like, it, it's not it's not worth it. This is a very unreliable Pokemon. It's cool to have super luck and scope lens, but it's just too weak for that to actually matter. I would much rather have just another Pokemon that can do the same amount of damage and not have to rely on, like, 25% chance of critting. It's a bad Pokemon. Don't use it. It's C-tier because, obviously, it's pretty solid into Berg, so if you get Samurott, you may want to try and get pit of so that you can have something it does evolve into tranquil by that point so you know whatever you it also gives you a ground immunity for clay so it's not like horrible so we're putting it in c tier but yeah this this pokemon is kind of kind of sucky Levani is a Pokemon that you can potentially get on Route 20. Um, it's unlikely for you to get her, but if you do get her, she's a pretty solid Pokemon. It's a very solid, bulky physical attacker. I'm actually going to put him in A tier because you can get Levani very early if you're not a monster and your Pokemon likes you. Um, it evolves into Swad Loon at level 20, and then Levani is Friendship. So you should be able to get it pretty, pretty quickly. It's one of the better grass types for the mid to late game since you can actually hit dark types for super effective damage. And obviously, you do need to watch out for like flying types and fire types, but Levani does pretty well into most neutral matchups. Sunflora, you can actually get Sunkern on Route 20. I don't think I ever have, but this Pokemon's F tier, like, like it's a trash encounter. It's basically Snivy, but but worse. And you can't even get Sunstone until you get to Nimbasa City. Theoretically, as a Sunkern, it still gets growth and Mega Drain. So if you can set up without getting instantly killed, it's not horrible into Charon, I guess, but I'm just gonna leave it in F tier anyways. Okay, Flockhessy Ranch encounters are next. Stoutland has a 50% chance of Intimidate. It will evolve before Roxy, so you do have Herp Derp with Intimidate if you get that one. It can definitely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Charon 
or I guess like, I guess do dogs, dogs have toes. Yeah, toe to toe, paw to paw, whatever. It also gets early bite and early crunch. It's a pretty bulky boy. And this is also another A tier encounter. This is one of the few Pokemon that's not a starter from the early game that you can like feasibly carry through the rest of your game. Ampharos. So Ampharos is not terrible, but it's also not amazing. Ampharos suffers from what I call Gen 2 syndrome, which is they kind of just rushed out Gen 2. And I feel like a lot of the Pokemon from that generation are really underbaked. And if those Pokemon came out in later generations, they'd have much higher stats and they'd probably have a really cool ability. Ampharos does not have high stats. It does not have a cool ability but it does get access to slow volt switch, which is pretty cool. It's a little too frail for that. I'm gonna put this in B behind Superior. Golduck, unfortunately, is D tier. This is probably the worst thing you can get in Flockessi Ranch. You know, late game, it's much better than Liopard, but you know, there's so many other better water types in this game. And because it just evolves so late, it's not particularly good. I would not want this from Flockessi Ranch personally. I would want a Zoomerel. This is A tier as well. I would say a Zoomerel, um, not quite as good as Stoutland. It's a 50-50 chance on whether you get huge power, but um, you get given the TM for return immediately after beating Charon. So you can just slap that on to your Azumarill and then sweep a lot of main Pokemon. It also gets Aqua Tail at level 21, so this is a really great solid answer into clay. It also does get Ice Punch by uh, Move Tutor, which is pretty good for Drayden. I don't think it's quite as good as Samurott, especially because it's not guaranteed to get it, but it is pretty close. This is a pretty solid Pokemon. Lucario, this is obviously A tier. This is high A tier. I am contemplating putting it in S, but I think I'm gonna keep it in A. Getting it early is ridiculous, right? Steel types in general are great. It makes Charon, Roxy, and Berg all super easy, so that's an instant check with that. You can even use Air Balloon Lucario for a great check into Clay's Exadrill. It's good into Drayden, it's good into Colrus, Getsis, Iris. Really good matchup into Grimsley, Caitlyn, even Chantel because you can teach it Dark Pulse. So I really like this Pokemon. The one issue that's preventing it from being an S tier personally is that it is very frail, so it's very susceptible to crits and especially in the late game, it's kind of hard to bring it in safely. And if you don't get the one shot, you are most likely going to get killed in return. So that rounds out the Pokemon that you can get before the first gym. So before the second gym, there's only a couple others. Both Dunsparce and Audino can be gotten from Shaking Grass on Route 20, but you don't actually get the Shaking Grass until after the first gym. So you're probably never gonna get these Pokemon here. Dunsparce is D tier. I, I've never used it, but you know, whatever. It's it's a Dunsparce, it's not good. Audino is C tier. Um, you know, it's... Uh, let's put it here just because what Audino is really nice for is that once you catch one early, it lets you abuse duplicate claws to get some really cool encounters later in the game in the shaking grass spots. Probably not going to get it from Route 20. I would actually recommend getting it from Route 5 or Route 16 because most of the Pokemon there you can get either in other places or they're just <laughs> not that good. This does have Regenerator though, so if you do get it early, like... It's okay, but you know, nothing special. Scolipede is in the dark grass of Route 20. Again, you're not likely to get it here. You're probably more likely to get it in Lost Lorn Forest, but this is a B tier Pokemon. I really love Scolipede. I wish it was stronger. It just isn't quite as good as I want it to be. But the good news is that it does evolve right at the normal mode level cap for Elisa, and it learns Dig. So it's pretty strong and can kind of just kill all of Elisa's Pokemon. It also does get bug bite like leave Annie, so you can kind of eat through the uh, the citrus berries of Pokemon. I really wish this was A tier, but I actually kind of struggle to bring this to the Elite Four whenever I try. All right, next up are the Pokemon from Verbank Complex. The first is Weezing. Um, I think this is a B tier Pokemon. It's kind of similar to Ampharos, where it's just a little too frail. It's obviously really good defensively, but most of the Pokemon in the late game that are the biggest problems are special attackers. So this is actually not a super great Pokemon for the late game. I guess it's okay into Marshall with the fighting types, but it's kind of a rough bring because he also can't really take out Marshall's Pokemon particularly quickly. It's just not the best Pokemon out there, but it is pretty solid, so we'll keep it in B tier. And another reason that you don't want this is because you definitely want the Magnemity from Verbank Complex. Magnezone is almost always S tier. It's just a really, really great Pokemon. Steel type is phenomenal. It's a great check into Roxy and Berg, obviously. Slow Volt Switch plus having access to Sturdy, which essentially prevents you from dying, is just incredible. Um, it's bulky, it's strong. It's honestly not that slow. It's that just all around really phenomenal Pokemon. It does suck that you don't get the TM for Thunderbolt until right before the Elite Four, 
but you do get signal beam for move tutor coverage and you can also get magnet rise from the move tutor to have a ground immunity so this is just a phenomenal pokemon and can really do wonders to like properly setting up pokemon getting a kill switching out with volt switch and giving you a safe switch into something else to deal with whatever comes out next fantastic pokemon s tier for sure Growlithe and Arcanine, Arcanine. This is an A tier Pokemon. It's another 50% chance for Intimidate. It's obviously solid for Roxy. It's good for Berg. Um, you can actually save evolving Growlithe into Arcanine until level 43 or so when he learns Outrage, which is actually one of the few good answers into Drayden. Or you can just evolve him early for really good damage into Elisa, into Clay, if you have an Air Balloon, for example. It's just a really solid Pokemon. Arcanine is just a very bulky, good Gen 1 Pokemon. It's not amazing into the late game threats other than, I guess, Colrus. But if you don't get Intimidate and you get Flash Fire, this can actually be a decent check into Chantel's Chandelure. So we're going to put him in A tier. Um, I think, honestly, he's about as good as Embor, if not better. Maybe a little bit below just because we don't get stab fighting. So Magmar and Magmortar, I'm going to split up Pokemon that evolve by trade just in case you don't play with trade. For these guys, it doesn't really matter. Magmar and Magmortar, they're black to exclusives. You're going to catch it as a Magby, so it has to stay as a Magby until level 30. There's better fire types. You definitely want Arcanine or Magnezone before that. So these are both going in B tier. Magmortar is a little stronger, but a little slower. We'll put him, you know, we'll put them like, let's say, let's say here. You can say the same thing about Electabuzz and Electivire. These are white two exclusives and you're stuck with Elekid until level 30, who dies to a light gust of wind. And you can't even get Electivire or Magmortar actually, for that matter, until the Plasma Frygate pretty late in the game. So these are gonna be B tier as well. Um, Fire types are kind of rare, so I think I would prefer having Magmordar, but it obviously depends on the game that you have. So these here are all the Pokemon that you will need to beat Roxy with, but she's pretty easy. Um, shouldn't be too bad. That gets you to Castelia City, where there are a bunch of different encounters in the sewers and in the gardens and everything like that. Um, the first one, of course, is Raticate, my boy Rat Power. This is A tier, um, you know, it's still really good if you get Guts, but Power Creep does mean that it's not quite as good as it is in previous generations. But even so, you do get Return super early. You can have Guts boosted sweeps that do really good damage. It's a pretty easy check into Elisa, Skyla, except Skarmory. And honestly, I haven't checked the damage calcs, but I imagine it would be pretty good into Drayden as well. It does have a really poor matchup into most of the Elite Four members though, so unfortunately I wouldn't be bringing this guy to the Elite Four. Crobat is also A tier. Um, it's not quite as good as in previous generations, again, because of power creep, and it just doesn't have really, really good answers into most of the Elite Four, who's, you know, they've got psychics, ghosts, dark types, but it's pretty solid into Marshall's Pokemon which is good. Acrobatics gives it really reliable stab and you can combine it with a flying gem for just disgusting amounts of damage. Obviously, if you get the Zubat here and you can get Crobat before Berg, it makes Berg free. So it's a very good Pokemon there. And it has a solid matchup into the rest of the mid game as well. So Muck, unfortunately, is C tier. Uh, it's just not strong enough for how slow it is and it's too susceptible to critical hits. You know, it gets good coverage with the elemental punches, but it's not strong enough for that to really matter. It's going to miss out on a lot of KOs and often just lacks a really reliable way to switch in. So this is C tier right around here. Swoobat. Swoobat is D tier. Swoobat sucks. Um, not as bad as Golduck. I mean, worse than Golduck, obviously. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's good for Berg, but as you can see, there's a lot of different things that are good for Berg. Pretty much anything that you get in the sewer will be good for Berg. The next ones are going to be Bulldor and Gigalith that you can get from the uh, tunnel thingy, whatever it's called. What is it called? Relic Tunnel? I don't remember, but uh, these guys are B tier. They get level up Stealth Rocks, which is sick because Stealth Rocks is no longer a TM and the move tutor for it is not accessible in the main game. If you get one with Sturdy, it's stupid proof. So if you make a mistake, Sturdy can save your ass. So that's good. Many of the late game threats are special or they have Earthquake or Fighting type moves. So it's not super good into the late game specifically, but in general, Gigalith is just like very, very strong. I'm gonna put this in low B tier, but I will be putting Gigalith, who's just kind of a cracked monster into high B tier here. Probably actually higher than 
than a superior. All right, Girder and Conkelder. Girder is B tier. Um, Conkelder is probably A tier. You know, they're bulky and strong. Guts and Sheer Force are both really good abilities. You do get elemental punches, and especially on Conkelder, that is strong enough to actually matter. You get Drain Punch, which is sick for recovery. Girder is definitely a little too weak to be actually useful for the late game stuff, but if you do get Conkelder, it's an absolute tank of a Pokemon. I would highly recommend it for Colrus, Getsis, Iris. Um, it struggles a bit into most of the Elite Four other than Grimsley, but still a really solid Pokemon. Let's put Girder around Ampharos and we'll put Conkelder in mid A tier, maybe near Stoutland. Maybe a little, yeah, 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 yeah. Onyx and Steelix. To get Onyx and Steelix here, you have to use a Dust Cloud, which means that you got absolutely screwed because you want Exadrill. Onyx, of course, is F tier. Onyx is trash. Onyx is worse than Sunflora. That's not actually true. Onyx completely walls Elisa, but we're putting him in F tier because Onyx sucks. Steelix is a good solid steel type. This is kind of like the best glow up in the history of Pokemon. I'm gonna put this in A tier. This is pretty high A tier too. Steel types are fantastic in this game. This is obviously really good into Elisa, and it's also good into Chorus's Kling Clang because that thing just can't do anything to you. So that's a great way to not lose a Pokemon to Giga Impact is with Steelix. However, you don't want that here. You probably want to try and pick up Steelix somewhere else in the game because Exadrill is an S tier Pokemon. As you can see, <laughs> our top uh, rankings here are very steel heavy, but Exadrill is phenomenal. It gets Earthquake at level 33. Be sure to just delay it a couple levels because once it gets Earthquake at level 33, you evolve it. And it's ironically the perfect answer into Clay's own Exadrill as long as you outspeed. Iron Head from Move Tutor gives it a super reliable steel stab move. This absolutely destroys Colrus. It absolutely destroys Getsis. It checks a lot of Iris. It's great into most of the Elite Four because of its steel typing. It also just has really insane sweeping potential because it can learn Hone Claws and Swords Dance by level up. The fact that it's basically guaranteed if you don't get it here, you can get it a little later. Always go for this Pokemon if you're struggling with Unova Nuzlocks. Okay, next up are all the Pokemon in the freaking garden in the middle of Castelia City. I honestly did not know Delcaddy was in this game until I was doing this tier list. This is an F tier Pokemon. It's a Delcaddy. It sucks. Don't use it. It's white too exclusive anyways. Low punny is slightly better, but but just slightly. We'll put it in D tier because I, I, I guess. Whimsicott is uh, black to exclusive, just like low punny. For a Pokemon that kind of dominates uh, VGC, it's just not that good in game. Like Prankster doesn't really matter for in game. And this Pokemon just doesn't hit hard enough for it to be all that good. We're going to put it in low C tier. However, it's white to counterpart Lilligant is actually quite good because it gets access to early Quiver Dance, which is nuts. Got a really solid special attack stat. This is definitely by far the best grass type so far. All right, next up are the Eeveelutions, and in general, they're kind of just the same as the Eeveelutions always are. I'm going to put Vaporeon right around where Samurott is. Uh, you get Water Pulse for Clay, which is pretty solid, and you also get Aurora Beam for um, Drayden. Jolteon, always just fast and strong. Um, its level up moveset is a little trash, but it does get Discharge around level 37, so that's not horrible. A tier for sure, because it's just speedy and strong. Let's put it, I don't know, um, right around the other pup here. Flareon is C tier, just just not that good, and I would much rather have any of the other uh, evolutions here. So let's put him in C tier. Espeon hits like a truck, but is a tad too frail to be that good, so he's going in B tier. Let's put him... I don't know, here. And Umbreon is always solid. You can get the Toxic TM in this game. You get Moonlight at level 33. This is, yeah, this is low A tier, but definitely A tier. Leafeon and Glaceon cannot be gotten until post game, so you have to choose between the first five evolutions. Okay, so now we're at Route 4, the Sand Desert Route. You really want Crocodile here because Crocodile is filthy. Crocodile is an S tier Pokemon as well. I would put him above Exadrill actually because Intimidate is a disgusting ability, as is Moxie. This guy can basically single-handedly sweep almost the entire Elite Four that isn't Marshall. Definitely want this Pokemon from Route 4 or from the Desert Resort. Darmanitan is another excellent Pokemon. Um, I'm actually gonna, I thought about putting him in S tier, but I'm gonna leave him in high A tier because Darmanitan 
it's it's very good but um as a darumaka it's really bad and you're gonna have to keep it alive until then but once you do get it belly drum plus any move that it knows will just destroy anything that doesn't resist it. This is, it's a filthy Pokemon. Obviously, setting up is a little harder in this game because there's so many strong Pokemon that hit so hard, but if you can find a way to do it, game over. Basculin, you can't actually get at this point because you won't have Surf, but we're just going to do him here because you can get him on Route 4. This is B tier. It's not the worst water type ever, but it's not the best, and you don't even get him before Clay, so... Actually, let's put him in C tier. He's he's not as good as Flareon for sure. All right, Garbodor um, or Garbodor or something. I don't know. This thing sucks. This is D tier. Um, it's too weak and too slow to be as frail as it is. He's he's actual trash, right? This is poor man's muck and wheezing for sure. All right, and Cincino is the last Pokemon that you can get from the Route 4 Sand. It is a deceptively powerful Pokemon, but it is still overshadowed by a lot of other Pokemon. So I really don't think this Pokemon is all that good. I'm gonna put him in B tier though, because he's not terrible and he can hit really hard with like Stab Return, Tail Whip if you have Skill Link, decent coverage, not the worst Pokemon in the world. Okay, so you can also get a Static Break Aviary or Mandibuzz, depending on the version of the game you're playing, on Route 4, but you can't do that until after you've beaten Berg. Braviary is white to exclusive, and it's probably the better of the two. It has kind of a limp moveset, especially because like the game is coded to have it learn moves later because it evolves normally so late. But this is still an A Pokemon, A tier Pokemon. It's not as good as Crobat um, or Azumarill, but I would put him here. He's just a really nice Pokemon to have for the mid game. Mandibuzz would be A tier if it wasn't for the fact that the one that you get at the early uh, Route 4 static encounter has its hidden ability, which is weak armor which is a trash ass ability terrible ability we're gonna put it in low b tier for that reason but this is a pretty solid bulky pokemon it does get roost but we're just leaving it at b tier Sandslash is a Pokemon that you can get from Desert Resort. He finally gets Earthquake by level up, which is cool, but this is basically just Crocodile and Exedrill with no sweeping potential. It's B tier for sure. Crustal though, Crustal my boy is S tier for sure. Shell Armor plus Shell Smash. Just a generally reliable, bulky boy. Very good Pokemon. Get this if you can, for sure. <laughs> Another S tier coming in hot is Scrafty. You definitely want this from Desert Resort. Scrafty is very similar to Crocodile in that it can have Moxie sweep potential. For those of you who don't know, I guess I should say, Moxie gives you an attack boost once you knock out a Pokemon. And the idea here with Scrafty is that it's so bulky that it's really hard for Pokemon to take it out. And it can just use Drain Punch to gain back all of that HP. After one or two boosts, you're good to kill basically anything. It's, it's a phenomenal Pokemon, um, really sweeps large portions of the Elite Four. Dark typing, as you'll see, is quite good into the Unova Elite Four. And the fact that this one has like easy setup potential is just wonderful. It also has all the elemental punches that make it really reliable. It's got Ice Punch theoretically for Drayden. Great Pokemon. Try and pick this one up if you can. Maractus, though. Maractus means that you're not going to get anything else from the Desert Resort. So Maractus is F tier. I'm sorry, buddy. Sigalyph. Very cool Pokemon. Wish it was a little better. This is going to be high B tier here. Mm, you know, right around here, maybe. Flygon, my boy, this is very, very unlikely to get in Desert Resort. I believe Trap Inch is a 5% encounter chance. You're much more likely to get it in Twist Mountain, and it's one of the better encounters from Twist Mountain, but definitely not the best. And I mean, it's solid for Drayden. Its level up moveset is always still a little bit of a bummer, especially because it doesn't learn Earthquake by level up, which is stupid. So uh, this is a B tier encounter. You know, you, you obviously don't want to discount a dragon by any means but unfortunately um just the way it shakes out not not quite as good as we want it to be i would put him i don't know right around here maybe so kofagrigus uh you're likely to get from the relic castle you know this is this is a good encounter a ghost types are always good to have so i'm gonna put it in a tier um it's you know its ability is pretty cool too the issue with it is that it's ultimately not really worth sacrificing either another chance at crocodile or the other pokemon that you can get from relic castle which we'll talk about later because you can't get it at this point in the game so that brings us to route 5 and route 16 on either side of nimbasa city we've got gothitelle and reuniclus here both of these are A tiers. Gothitelle is a black 2 exclusive. Reuniclus is a white 2 exclusive. They both ba 
basically do the same thing. They are psychic spammers. One of them's faster. Gotha tells a little bit faster. Reuniclus is a little bit stronger, but they're both really good at what they do, which is psychic spamming. So they're going to go in A tier. These are probably the best psychic spammers that you can get. Let's put them here. They're bulky enough to also be pretty solid into most of Marshall's Pokemon. Emolga, Emolja. This is going to be a shaking grass encounter. Um, you kind of have to get this if you want to get some other Pokemon. It's not good. It's got great typing, which is unfortunate because its stats are just trash. This is mid C tier. It's just not a good Pokemon, unfortunately. So the Pokemon here are all Pokemon that you can get from Lost Lowen Forest, most of them from, you know, Shaking Grass Spots. So like the, the Poop Monkey and the other monkeys, these guys are all pretty uncommon because you only get them in Shaking Grass and their goodness is very dependent on which starter you chose or like what your team is. They're all about the same though. They're just C tier. Simiseer, for example, gets Yawn. So that's pretty good. We'll put him, you know, right around Flareon, I guess. Maybe a little lower. Simapur gets very early Scald at level 22. So that's obviously really good into Clay's Exadrill. It's just 10% chance to get it in Shaking Grass is pretty unlikely. So that's kind of frustrating. And um, Simisage gets basically nothing. So I don't know, I'd put it around Whimsicott. Just not that good, it doesn't have any tricks. Bad Pokemon. Roserade is B tier. Roserade is a pretty solid grass type. I don't think it's as good as Superior because it's not as um, as strong or bulky. And it's also not as strong as Lilligant. So I'll put it, I don't know, somewhere around these guys here. Vespiquen, um, good luck getting a female combi. And even if you do, it's not very good. Bug flying is has bad matchups into virtually every single boss battle. You know, I mean, it does get reliable recovery with heal order and it does learn toxic by level up. So it's not terrible, I guess, but it's still going in C tier. We can put it in high C tier because it's it's bulky, I guess. Heracross, Heracross is A tier because it's a Heracross. They're always really high leveled because they're very bulky and they're very strong and Guts is a phenomenal ability. This one is black to exclusive, but if you get it, you get it, great. Um, it's a very solid Pokemon, obviously. We'll put it right around the other bug guy. Pinsir is the white two exclusive, so white two once again gets shafted here. I don't know, it's, it's not a good Pokemon. It's C tier, it's too slow. It doesn't have really good stab. I mean, it does get X scissor now in this gen, so that's, that's good, I guess, but no, no, not worth it. Floatzel is a Pokemon that you can't get until you get Surf after Clay. Um, you can get it in Lost Lorne Forest. I don't really know why you would want to delay for it. You can also pick it up in a couple other spots later in the game. It's likely too frail to really be that useful. I've never used it in Black 2 and White 2, so maybe it has some benefit, but I'm going to put this in low B tier. Just it's, I don't know. It's, it's not that good. Zorark is a guaranteed encounter. If you want to get it from the uh, Driftvale City, you can get it. You can get N Zorark. This is a pretty strong Pokemon, but it's not quite strong enough to be as frail as it is. It's really let down by its level up moveset. You're going to have to use Snarl as a special dark type move until you get Dark Pulse from the Move Tutor in Lentimos Town. Um, Illusion is a really cool ability, but it's honestly not that useful. It's only good in very niche circumstances, and you can almost always find a better, more reliable way to solve a problem than to use illusion. It still is good for Caitlyn and Chantel though, and it does get level up U-turn. So that's solid for pivots and stuff like that. I'm going to put this in B tier specifically because I think you should rather go for the guaranteed Jellicent, but um, we'll put them right around here. All right, another guaranteed encounter is Swana. This is obviously the only Pokemon you can get on Driftvale Drawbridge. Sadly, it's not a good Pokemon. It's too frail. It's not strong enough to do anything. It's pretty solid for clay, I guess, especially if you're on challenge mode because you can evolve it into Swana and you're not stuck with Duckling. But, you know, that's about all it can do. It can't learn Blizzard, so you can't do anything with it for Drayden. This is a C tier Pokemon for sure. Uh, we'll put it in high C tier though, because surf spam is surf spam. Escavalier. I mean, technically this thing, this is F tier. So is Shelmet. Like if you, if you aren't trading to evolve them, these things are dog shit. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. Escavalier though is another steel type. So this goes in A tier. Um, not quite S tier because it's pretty slow and it's level up moveset isn't amazing, but it's definitely better than Lucario here. 
Um, let's put it in high A tier, I'd say. I would rather have this than Steelix, I think, as well. Excelgore is the counterpart, and this is not good. Like, yeah, it's crazy stupid fast, but nobody cares about that. Um, you know, he has speedy U-turn and yawn support, which is fine, but like, whatever. Uh, I'll put this right around here. Okay, Sawsbuck. So Sawsbuck is what you're most likely going to get from Route 6, unless you go for the guaranteed Amoongus. Salzbuck is a very solid Pokemon. Um, it kind of suffers from that jack of all trade thing where it's like kind of bulky, but not really. It's kind of strong, but not really. Kind of fast, but not really. You get Horn Leech and Leech Seed, which is pretty cool, but it's just really not that bulky. So it's kind of hard to take advantage of that. This is, however, actually the perfect counter to Marlin's Jellicent, who can be pretty tricky. Um, Jellicent hits really, really hard and being resistant to Scald and immune to Shadow Ball is pretty nasty. But yeah, I, I mean, this is B tier. It's a solid grass type. I would put it right around Superior, to be honest. Okay, another one is Amoongus. This is a guaranteed encounter if you want to use the static Pokeballs to guarantee Fungus on Route 6. You're going to need to delay the evolution until level 50 if you even want to get Spore because Amoongus learned Spore after the Elite Four level cap. This also won't evolve before Clay, which is really frustrating. So theoretically, really cool Pokemon, just in practice, not that great. You do get Toxic and Synthesis, which is pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, this is this is a B-tier Pokemon as well. We're going to put it low B-tier, maybe right around Weezing. Cast form. Uh, you have to go out of your way to get this thing. Don't do it. F tier. So these are the all the Pokemon up here that you can use to beat Clay. Good luck. It's He, he is pretty tough. Okay, but now we get to post Clay, which unlocks the uh, Relic Passage in the Pokemon World Tournament. And there you can either get Claydol or Volcarona. If you're going to delay on, and not go for Crocodile in Relic Castle, do not get Claydol. Like, it's a pretty solid Pokemon. It's bulky. But don't get Claydol if you can get freaking Volcarona. I'm going to put this in, like, maybe right around here. Something like that. Volcarona, though. Volcarona is an S-tier Pokemon. It is a ridiculously powerful Pokemon. It is awesome. The one issue is that you're going to need to heavily rely on TMs and move tutor moves. But especially in the late game, this thing can just crush entire teams. It's got Signal Beam, Flamethrower, Psychic. You can also get Quiver Dance from the Elite Four, depending on how you abuse the level cap. So yeah, phenomenal Pokemon. Definitely like the fact that you can guarantee get this if you want it is fantastic. Okay, Charge Stone Cave Encounters. Kling Kling is B tier because it's got a trash moveset. I just really can't take advantage of its pretty solid stats. We'll put this right below Amphros. Galvantula has a sick design, so we're putting it in S tier. No, I'm just kidding. We are putting it in A tier though. This is right around uh, Jolteon. I would say it's better because Bug Buzz means you can hit the dark types for super effective damage and compound eyes, 50% chance of that will give you 91% accurate thunder, which is pretty nuts. This is great into Getsis, the Elite Four, Iris, the whole shebang. I really like this Pokemon. Ferrothorn is A tier. It's another steel type. I don't want to keep repeating myself and saying the same thing with steel types. So this is right around, uh, we'll put this here. Um, if this Pokemon were able to learn Leech Seed, not by egg move, then it would be a very easy S tier encounter. But just being very bulky and having really good typing means that it can check a lot of Pokemon. You can teach it Iron Head, you can teach it Seed Bomb for really reliable stab moves. This is probably one of the best things you can get from Charged Stone Cave. Electros is, is rare. Um, this is a solid mixed attacker with a lot of coverage moves. It doesn't exactly do one specific thing amazingly, but it can be a very solid utility player. It's like a step up from a jack of all trades Pokemon. It's like a queen of all trades or something. With the immunity to ground type moves, this is a pretty solid Pokemon and can do some real good damage in the late game if you need it to. We're gonna put it in B tier, probably right here. Probopass is probably the worst steel type you could get. And just because it's outclassed by absolutely everything else in Chargestone Cave, I'm gonna put it in C tier. If you get it, it's not terrible, but like I would much rather have pretty much anything else. Uh, we'll actually put it below Swana. Jellicent is S tier. And you know what? I actually forgot about this when I was saying it earlier. Uh, don't go for Jellicent in Drift Fail City. Go for Jellicent in Verbank City because it's the only Pokemon that you can get there from surfing. So just go back to Verbank City, surf for this. You can get Zorark if you want. I, I guess maybe for that reason, we'll put Zorark a little bit higher. We'll put him right next to Umbreon as like a solid dark type 
because I, I did forget that you don't have to sacrifice Jellicent there. Jellicent is a phenomenal Pokemon. Um, with Water Absorb, this grants you three immunities, which is very, very good. It has very reliable recovery with recover. <laughs> uh, it's a little too slow for Chantel, but it can be really good with uh, for pivoting for that fight. It's obviously good for Marshall. It's good for Caitlyn. You can teach it Blizzard for uh, Drayden, and I would always recommend getting this and training it up and making it part of your team. The other sort of surf encounter is Alomomala. You got to go out of your way to catch this thing by looking into a surf spot. It's not worth it. You know, it's got wish support, but that's about it. Not worth the team slot, D tier for sure. The two Pokemon that we haven't talked about that you can get from Mr. Alton Cave are Agron and Haxorus. Agron is filthy. Um, another Steel type, we'll put it right around Steelix, I guess. Maybe a little bit below Steelix. Haxorus, of course, is S tier. Haxorus is probably the best Pokemon in the game. You get Dragon Dance at level 32. This thing is basically illegal. Anything that doesn't resist this dies immediately. Even if you have rivalry instead of Mold Breaker and you get screwed by like the gender matchups, like this thing has 147 attack. This is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous Pokemon. If you get it, game over. Okay, so now we are on the other side of Miss Stralton Cave and Shardstone Cave. Uh, we've got Substrika here. This is an okay Pokemon. It's great for Skyla and Marlin, but that's about it. Not worth bringing into the late game. I'm going to put it in B tier for that reason. Right around here, maybe. Zangoose is... Eh, eh. You know, it's C tier. It's something like maybe near Flareon, which both of these Pokemon can work well, I guess, right? But at this point in the game, we're getting to the point where there's so many other types of Pokemon that you can get that there's probably going to be one that does what Zangoose would do on your team but better. It does get Swords Dance by level up, which is cool and it's pretty speedy, but like, again, I, I think there's other Pokemon, for example, Exadrill, that can set up and kill much more reliably than Zangoose. So, C tier. Seviper, for the same reason, except it doesn't have anything good going for it. It's B tier. I'm going to put it below these guys because these guys are at least useful early game. You get this late game. Bear Tick is pretty solid because it's one of the few ice type Pokemon that you can get before fighting Drayden. So it's not awful. You are going to have to change the date on your very real Nintendo DS to be a uh, winter month to get this on Route 7. But if you do, it's solid. Unfortunately, it's a little too slow to be like a perfect check into Drayden. Um, like his Flygon will probably outspeed you and can threaten with Rock Slide. So for that reason, he's going to stay in B tier, but you, you could do worse. You could definitely do worse. We'll put him right next to Flygon. There you go, buddy. Speaking of doing worse, Behem. Behem is awful. I hate this Pokemon so much. Do not ever get this Pokemon. You can guarantee Chandelure in the first couple floors of Celestial Tower. Don't even think about getting this. Chandelure is good. Behem is trash. F is way too harsh. I want to put it in F, but we'll just put it in D tier. It is high D tier though, like, let's be honest. Uh, we'll actually put Golduck up here too as well. Okay, so Chandelure. Chandelure is absolutely an S tier encounter. It's one of the best Pokemon in the game. Uh, not quite as good as these ones. Yeah, somewhere here. With Flash Fire, you get another three immunities. This thing has 145 special attack, which is ridiculous. It's got solid bulk. It's got decent speed. You can sweep entire teams with this Pokemon. It's, it's fantastic. Stick. Always go for this in Celestial Tower and uh, get ready to do some sweeping with a chandelier. So those are all the Pokemon that are going to be before Skyla. So once you beat Skyla, you take a flight over to Lentimos Town and there's a huge stretch before Drayden with a ton of Pokemon that like you probably didn't know were in the game. Most of them are outclassed by a lot of things. Drapion is not one of those things. Drapion is definitely S tier, especially if you get battle armor to prevent critical hits. It's not the hardest attacker, but it's very bulky and it's speedy enough to be able to set up with home claws and then just go to town. You get Ice Fang, which is a really solid option for Drayden, and it should be fast enough to outspeed Flygon with a little bit of EV investment. You can get X Scissor, Cross Poison, Crunch. All of those are fantastic for Getsis, most of the elite four. This is a phenomenal Pokemon. We're putting it in S tier. It requires a little bit of finesse more so than, let's say, the Moxie Sweepers and the Pokemon with like a bajillion special attack or attack. But um, yeah, this is a very good S tier Pokemon. 
as is Skarmory. Skarmory is fantastic. I'm going to put him right next to Exedril. The main reason Skarmory is good is because it is one of the only Pokemon that perfectly walls Iris's Haxorus. It takes no damage from all three of his moves, and you can very easily also justify bringing it because it'll wall Archeops if you're lucky. It gets Iron Head Move Tutor. It gets Roost by Move Tutor. It can have Sturdy, so that's that stupid proof again. It's really good into Drayden as well. Drayden's Haxorus also doesn't really hit this very hard. Fantastic Pokemon. Skarmory is almost always S tier because Steel Flying is such a phenomenal typing. Camerupt is D tier because it's a fucking terrible Pokemon. Um, it's not F tier because it's... Ah, screw it. It's F tier. It's high F tier. Camerupt sucks. The Pig is like Behem, but... It's a pig and it's not as strong. Um, I don't know, something like here maybe. Drift Blim is actually still pretty solid and is also from um, Reversal Mountain, but I would much rather have Drapion or Skarmory. So I'm gonna put this in B tier. Let's put it right around, um, yeah, so somewhere around here, let's say. Banet is from the Strange House, but I think Strange House is more useful for getting another chance at Solosis and Gothita, or honestly, even like Raticator Crobat. So this is, I don't know, this is B tier. Ghost types are always nice to have. Shadow Claw is probably pretty solid here, but it's nothing to write home about. We'll put it right around Claydol, I think. These next encounters are on the routes that surround Undula Bay. Pelipper, I kind of really didn't know that Pelipper was in this game. It's outclassed by other water types and it doesn't get drizzle in this game, so we'll put it in C tier, right around here maybe. Lunatone and Solrock, Power Creep, ruin these suckers. Um, they're just not strong enough or bulky enough to do anything. Uh, I guess maybe they're better than the pig, but actually not really because you take they take neutral damage from Marshall, so at least the pig kind of can do stuff from Marshall. These things suck, yeah, D tier. Absol is A tier, uh, Swords Dance, Dark type, pretty good. We'll put them at the bottom with all the other dark types. I think this is a better version than Umbreon and Zorark here. Um, Sucker Punch before the nerf. It's 80 base power in this game, so that's pretty solid. Yeah, you know, um, you also get X Scissor and Super Power for coverage, which can be pretty good into Getsis and different members of the Elite Four, so Absol's not terrible. Tangrowth. Um, it's always nice to see this guy. Again, did not know he was in the game, but at this point, he doesn't really match up well into anything other than Marlin. Uh, same thing with all the other, you know, grass types. This one I would put around Roserade. Do you want speed or do you want bulk? Starmie. Um, Starmie is usually S tier, but because there's so many dark types in this game, in the late game, we're just going to put it in A tier. This is still probably the best encounter that you can get from like Route 13 or Undula Town or whatever. Very fast, very strong. I like this Pokemon a lot. We'll put it right above Samurai, I think. Mantine. Um, Mantine is also A tier. It's a little tricky to get. You get it in Undula Bay. It does get access to Roost via Move Tutor, which is nice, and it is a very solid special defensive wall, which is very good for a lot of the special defensive threats. You know, um, it can also have Swift Swim or Water Absorb, both of which are really good abilities. The one thing that you will have to know about it is that you're probably going to catch it as a Mantike, so you will need to fudge the Nuzlocke rules a little bit to get a Remoraid, unless you just want to get lucky and hope that you get it from the alternate place that you don't get Mantine from. I tend to, when I ever get Mantike, just like allow myself to evolve it by catching a Remoraid because otherwise that's just a waste of an encounter. But this is A tier for sure. We'll put it right with this this kind of squadron of, of water types here. I think it's better than Samurai. Octillery is not Gen 2 Syndrome as hell. It's outclassed by virtually every other water type in the game, but it is a Pokemon that learns Ice Beam by level up and you can get it from Drayden. Uh, before Drayden, I should say. I think it might be the only Pokemon that can learn Ice Beam before Drayden. So that is something. I've, I've never used this Pokemon in Black 2 and White 2, as with a lot of these Pokemon in the later routes. You kind of solidify your team before this point in the game anyways. But um, this is this is B tier, I guess. I, I would put it below Floatzel, though. Floatzel is probably speedier and can learn Ice Punch, so... Next up is Wailord. Um, you can virtually guarantee this with a Jellicent dupe by going to a surfing spot in Undula Bay, but I really don't see a scenario where you would use Wailord instead of Jellicent. So this is a D tier Pokemon. I'm sorry, Wailord. You're cool, but you can hang out with all your Gen 3 friends over here. Walrein. Um, also didn't know this Pokemon was in the game, but it's a slow ice type before Drayden. So like, I, I don't know. It's level up moveset is pretty trash, which makes it not a great answer into Drayden's Pokemon 
Pokemon, but it is an Ice type. You can get it in Undula Bay during the winter times. So I don't know. Let's let's put him in B tier. I'm gonna put him in C tier actually. No, we can put him in B tier because like you could feasibly bring this to the Elite Four if you really did feel so inclined to do so. Um, let's put him here, and we're actually gonna move Bear Take down to where he is. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. The, this some of these are a little wonky, but that's fine. Okay, Mian Xiao. Mian Xiao has a 50% chance at Regenerator. Uh, it's got speedy U-turns for great pivots. It is very frail, so you do need to be very careful, but it is one of the few Pokemon that gets fake out by level up in this game. Uh, you can use that to break sturdy. It also gets drain punch by level up. It gets high jump kick. It also does potentially have dual chop, which can be used for Drayden potentially. I haven't actually done those calcs, so I don't want to like swear by that, but it should be strong enough that that is a feasible thing that you could do. So um, yeah, Miencho's a, a solid A tier. I would put this right around, you know, maybe Heracross, Lee Vanny, something like that. Let's put him here. Altaria, you know, I, I did, I believe, beat Drayden with Altaria once in a random Nuzlocke. Like I just spammed Dragon Pulse, but you're gonna need a lot of EVs for that. And I think I just barely did that. This is a C tier Pokemon. Unfortunately, Altaria is just not that good. We'll put it right with the other duck over here. Lapras, Lepra. So you have a 5% chance of finding Lepra in a special surf spot in Village Bridge, which means you have to be actively going for this by going into a special surf spot. And you effectively need Meryl and Basculin dupes to get this guaranteed. So it's super unlikely you're gonna get this, but like, you might as well go for it because it's a great Pokemon. It can get Shell Armor. It can get Water Absorb. This is really good for Drayden because it's an Ice type. It also does get Ice Shard, which might be able to just snipe Flygon. I'm not totally sure about that. So yeah, this is an obvious A tier Pokemon. If it was guaranteed or even a little more likely, then I would definitely give it S tier, but I'm going to put it right before Starmie here. Okay, Glysaur. So you can get Glysaur or Gligar on Route 11, which is right before Opelucid City. This is obviously a very great and bulky Pokemon. It gets a lot of coverage moves. It does get Ice Fang, for example, if you evolve it into Glysaur. Um, it also gets Roost. It can get Swords Dance. It can get Acrobatics. So this is a very, very solid Pokemon. The issue is that if you want it for Drayden, you're gonna have to do a Shaking Grass spot because Razor Fang can't be accessible until you get the HM for Waterfall. Regardless of that though, this is really good into Colrus. It checks a lot of his Pokemon. It's really solid into Getsis. It's really good into Iris. The one issue is that if you do choose to evolve Gligar into Glysaur, you're going to have to use a Razor Fang, and then you cannot use a Razor Fang for fling strategies to break Sturdy or Focus Sash with some of your Pokemon like Crocodile. Crocodile is really good for Haxorus because you can teach it fling. You can fling to flinch the Haxorus that Iris has, breaking his Sturdy, and then killing with Outrage. So there's only one Razor Fang in the game and there's no King's Rock, so you won't have any other options to flinch something with Fling, but it might be worth it if you happen to get Glygar and Glysaur is really good for your team. So Glysaur is an A tier Pokemon. Um, let's put him right around Steelix, I'd say. Bisharp. Bisharp is an S tier Pokemon. Um, make sure to delay for Swords Dance at level 57 and then evolve it. And then you can just plow through Getsis. You can plow through the Elite Four. Specifically with Getsis, this Bisharp is completely free to set up against Cofagrigus because Cofagrigus has Psychic, Shadow Ball, Protect, and Toxic, which do nothing to Bisharp. Iron Head, Night Slash, and Dig really just cakes the entire Elite Four with the exception of Marshall. Definite S tier. You know, I've been saying that steel types are really good in this game and dark types are really good in this game so obviously the steel dark type pokemon is going to be a very strong s tier encounter shuckle i i did not know shuckle was in this game but that's because it's a five percent chance to get him in the basement floor of the seaside cave so like i don't blame myself for that one i don't think you'll ever get this ever but obviously it's a good bulky pokemon if you do get it so i you know we'll put it in a tier it has encore toxic leftovers or you can do some shenanigans with shell smash power trick all that crap there's usually a better and easier way to deal with things but like shuckle is a very good pokemon i, I can't deny that and well we'll put him in low a tier just to to respect the shuck you know dugon so dugon technically can be obtained 
before Drayden because you can get into Seaside Cave. You're just blocked by that guy with all the uh, freaking exploding rock and rollas. So there's a 10% chance to get him by just running around Seaside Cave. And theoretically, Dugon would be quite good into Drayden. But realistically, you're probably not going to get him there. If you do get him anywhere, it's going to be by surfing in Seaside Cave, which has to happen post Drayden. This this Pokemon, I wish this Pokemon was good. I, I love how he looks. I love the design. He's so cool and cute, but it's very jack of all tradey. I'm gonna put him in B tier. Well, you know, he's he's above these guys. I would say he's the best of the three potential ice types that you can get. So next up is a bunch of Pokemon that are, you know, pre chorus and gets this. Corsola is only D tier instead of F tier because like there's nothing that you can get that's better than Corsola. Like you're probably just gonna get this from Humalau Town or whatever it's called. But this is this is a terrible Pokemon. There's always better water types. Put it here, I guess. I, I don't know. It's not a good Pokemon. In Giant Chasm or Chasm, I don't actually know which one it is. Um, there's like a bajillion Pokemon that you can get here and most of them are pretty good. I would recommend just trying to go for Weavile in the cave area because Weavile is definitely the best. It's an easy S tier. Again, a dark type in S tier. So surprise, surprise. We'll put him right here. Weavile can get Night Slash. He can get Ice Shard, Ice Punch, which is really good, obviously for Drayden. Uh, not Drayden, sorry, for Iris. This is just a really fast, strong, very, very good Pokemon. Mama Swine is not quite as fast, uh, but it's definitely stronger. It operates very similarly to Weavile, though it doesn't get dark type stab moves. It gets Earthquake, which is good in its own way. It's not quite as good into the Elite Four as Weavile, so we're gonna make it an A tier Pokemon here, but this is obviously still really good. Let's put him maybe here. Clefable. There's just so many other good encounters in Giant Chasm that this one just isn't amazing. Its TM moveset is actually quite good, but it's just hard to safely bring him in when the enemy is usually hitting with a really strong stab attack because he has no resistances other than a ghost type immunity. So this is B tier for sure. We'll put him right around uh, Chill Army or whatever this is called, Cincino. Delibird, like guys, Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Vanillux is A tier. This is basically an Ice Beam spammer. It could be worse, um, but Weavile is just better in my opinion. It's A tier though, because it's still pretty good into Getsis and especially Iris. So let's give this, I don't know, right around Jolteon maybe. Yeah, somewhere here, let's say. Ditto is F tier, <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. Metagross. Metagross is S tier. This is a really unlikely Pokemon for you to get, but you can get it in the plains of the giant Chasm slash Chasm. We're going to put him, we'll put him in low S tier here. Your best bet in how to get it is to probably go for a shaking grass spot for the one in three chance of getting it if you have an Audino dupe. Uh, worst case, you get Clefable, but you could also just get Mamoswine. So that's, that's not like a horrible gamble here. It does mean that you're going to sacrifice your chance of getting Sneasel because you won't be in the cave, but 33% chance at Metagross. It's not horrible. The one issue, right, is that Metagross is really difficult to catch. It has a very, very low catch rate, and uh, it'll also be at a pretty high level, so it might do some serious damage to your team. So just be careful about that. You don't want to lose Pokemon while trying to catch it. And because it's a 5% chance in the grass patch, you're going to need a lot of patience, if you know what I mean, because everybody plays on a very real Nintendo DS, so there's no way to, like, speed up or anything so you're gonna need a lot of patience for it right but yeah you know without the steel nerf this is obviously a very good pokemon it's really good into marshall caitlin iris this is also another perfect counter to iris's haxorus if you manage to set up a magnet rise to avoid earthquake so um yeah s tier pokemon if you get metagross so these last couple Pokemon you won't be able to get until right before the Elite Four, which is kind of frustrating. Um, you're going to need Waterfall to get to Abundant Shrine, which is where Nine Tails and Bronzong live. Um, this this can't do anything into the Elite Four. You should not bring this. Like I guess it's good into Metagross, which is Steel type and like Bisharp and stuff, but it's, it's just too frail. It's not strong enough. It doesn't have Drought. Like unless you try and go for the Hidden Grotto, which again requires a lot of patience. But um, yeah, it's don't bring this to the Elite Four. It's not worth it. Bronzong, um, I'm gonna give B tier specifically because it's a really solid answer into Hughes Buffalant if you have Levitate. But it's really just still not strong enough to fully capitalize on any of the good type matchups that it has against the uh, Elite Four. 
Um, it doesn't have a reliable recovery move, so it's kind of hard for it to chip away at things. Yeah, this is this is low B tier because it's not unusable, but let's put this right here. All right, last couple here. Throw. Uh, this is on Victory Road. Throw can't learn Drain Punch, so that's stupid. And it also has no way to recover, so it's not really good for guts. Bulk up by level up is pretty cool, I guess. But this guy is B tier because he's just completely outclassed by a sock with sturdy. So we're gonna put him in B tier, maybe also right near where Bronzong is. Sock though, I do think is A tier. This is one of only two non-rocker steel type Pokemon with sturdy. I, I bet most people can't figure out what the other Pokemon that isn't rock or steel type is that gets sturdy. Anyways, sturdy is obviously really good on sock because it's great for counter shenanigans. It's great for setting up bulk up. It ensures that you survive at least one attack, which means that you should be fast enough to hit most things twice before having to risk going down. This is really good for Grimsley. It's obviously the perfect answer for Iris's lead Hydreigon, who can be pretty scary. You can also deal with Agron, uh, Lepra, and if you manage to maintain sturdy you can also deal with archaeops pretty effectively as well i would not use him for haxorus though because mold breaker will rip through sturdy and your sock will die so so don't rely on sturdy for mold breaker haxorus this guy is a definite a tier i'm gonna put him with the other uh fighting types in a tier i guess just really really just lucario i mean lucario is obviously better because we get him so early so actually let's put him in below and bore there. Buffalant, C tier. Um, he's a big boy, but he's a normal type, not reliable enough to bring him to the Elite Four, which is the only time you're ever gonna use him, so C tier it is. Drudagon, Drudagon's not terrible, but it has a really neutral matchups into all of the Elite Four and actually losing matchups into all of Iris's dragons because it's so slow. So Drudagon, um, I'll still put him in B tier because he's, he's, a, he's a little bulky dragon boy, but you're just not likely gonna use him, right? If he's only coming for the Elite Four. Similar reasons, you know, Golurk, like I can't put Golurk in D tier because Stab Earthquake is a thing and it hurts. But I don't know, this thing is always like a little less bulky than I expect it to be. It's always really disappointing. You know, it's decent if you need a martial answer, but like, I, I just think he's a little too slow and a little too frail to really do much. And also, Iron Fist on Golurk is a fucking myth. Like, I've literally never had a Golurk that doesn't have Klutz as an ability. It doesn't exist. So, yeah, this is, this is C tier, but high C tier for sure, because it's still usable. Last Pokemon, then, is Hydreigon, but the thing with Hydreigon is that it does not evolve before the Elite Four level cap. If you're not playing with level caps, obviously this is going to be much higher, but because I'm talking about Hardcore Nuzlocke specifically, this means that Hydreigon for the non-post game is stuck as a Zwylos, and that's really not worth one of the six slots unless it is literally your last six Pokemon. It's like, a, like if it's one of your last six Pokemon, then bring it instead of not bringing it, right? But I really, I really don't think there's anything that Zwylos can do that's better than almost anything else except for a few of the Pokemon in D tier, I guess. So we're going to put this in D tier, assuming that this is Zwylos. Like, is Zwylos better? Is Eviolite Zwylos better than Liopard? Honestly, I don't know, but it's right around there. It's right around there. All right, let's scroll back up to the top and you can take a look at kind of our final rankings here. Um, so these are our S tier and A tier Pokemon. Uh, this was this was really fun. It was really long because there's a lot of encounters in this game. I really hope that if you have not tried out a black two or white two Nuzlocke, that this hopefully gives you some inspiration, some motivation. You can kind of know what to look out for, what to address, because they are really, really fun and well-made and very beautiful games. So I, I, I really hope this helps people out. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think about the rankings. Preferably, you do it in a way that's that's nice, but do what you gotta do. Um, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy ranking videos like this, and I will see you all next time. Be kind to each other, and uh, peace.